We had a bunch of shootouts. Uh, we, we took out four or five guys, and, you know, we, we even hit a guy that was around the chin by mistake, but he was in a social club, a Colombo club, and that caused some concern, figuring now we hit a guy in another family, the Genovese family. But the chin, the boss of that family, sent a message back that Greg already said to us. He said he was a big boy. He shouldn't have been there. He shouldn't have been there. And that was a message that came back from the chin. So it's old school. He says he shouldn't have been in that club. So he knew? He knew. You know there's a war going on. Why are you hanging out in a Colombo social club? What about the relationship at the start? Where was she in this? Linda? Yeah, was she? Oh, no, she was, she, was, she was home. She was um, uh, cheering us on. I mean, she knew, like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, you know, we had a police scanner. Uh, so we were able to listen. And this is a great time for me to lead into what Greg, I said the true, the real Greg. We had a scanner. And there was a five-digit code. Pick any five numbers. Any five numbers in the whole wide world, okay? And it was a secret code that the FBI and the task force, the New York Police Task Force, Organized Crime Task Force that were working with the FBI, they're the only ones that had that code. And we had it. So we were listening to them as they followed us, as they followed our enemies. Then we were getting information where our enemies were. And we're trying to figure this out. I said, how the fuck is Greg getting his info? You know? One of them was Larry Lampese. He says he gets out of his apartment every morning about 3.30 in the morning. He owned a bus company, school bus. So they start out like 4, 4.30 in the morning. He's got to get there before all the drivers. And he tells, tells us he's going to back out of his driveway. Then he gets out of the car to go lock his gate. He's got to do it with a key. That's when we're going to get him. So we're saying, how the hell does he know this guy gets out there? Find out later on. And he used to tell us he had a girlfriend. That's what he called it. Because we had this big shoe phone too. Like the old days, the stock brokers used to use them. And nobody had cell phones back then. It was beepers or, or that. And he would call somebody. And he called him his girlfriend. We thought it was somebody on the other side that we were fighting. Somebody that was trying to be friends to save his life at some point. Turns out, it's an FBI agent. Greg the Grim Reaper is a government informant for 30 years. And he was getting information from this guy of where these guys would be. And he's the one that told us about Larry by the time he gets out of the house. The next night we went, lights of the caddy came on, 3.20. We got there about 3 o'clock, 3.10, whatever it was. And he rolls out. And this one, and this is another one that I see the change in me. Because... I was saying now at this point, we're shooting guys, we're killing, and they're just, they're not coming in. Why don't they give up? Why don't they surrender? So I remember saying to Greg, I says, you know what? We got to massacre somebody. Look where I went from literally an altar boy at one point in my life to telling the Grim Reaper. I'm telling the Grim Reaper, we got to massacre somebody. We got to send them a message that they say, this is personal. This isn't business. This is personal now. We're done. Anybody we see, we, you know, really... So this guy wound up being that guy. He backs out. Greg, Greg and I get out. Jimmy's not supposed to get out because he's driving. We need him in the car. Greg shoots him with the rifle. He goes down. He starts crawling a little bit to try to get away. Then he collapses. He's just laying there. And as we get up to him, he said something to us. Either he said, do it already, or what did I do? I remember hearing do do it or what I do something like that and I'm gonna tell you why that's important in a few minutes but now Greg puts the rifle up I get the shotgun he keeps shooting with the rifle and I'm hitting him with the shotgun Jimmy comes out after it's all said and done not after it's all said and done comes over and he puts two shots behind his ear and that's what Greg's trademark was he told us that his kids he told me and his, his son on a hit one of the hits him and his I, I did with Greg Jr. The guy didn't die until he got in the ambulance. 
on the way to the hospital, he died. And Greg was furious about that. And this was a very classic piece of work. I mean, it was classic. It was on 86th Street. There were cops all around. We had to have a good setup with the crash cars and stuff. And he comes over to me and Greg, his son, and he looks us both in the eye, back and forth like that. He says, you never, ever not put a bullet in the guy's head behind his ear. He looks at me and says, that's my trademark. He says, you put a bullet behind his ear. I don't care if you hit him with 20 shots. He says, he could have identified you on the way to the hospital. That's the way he thinks. So I remember saying to myself, this is fatherly advice to Gregory and me. I was like a son to him by this point. Put a bullet behind his ear. So anyway, Jimmy did that. And this guy was massacred. And it really was the last hit of the war. How dangerous was the Grim Reaper? How many <sighs> bodies has he killed? You know, he told me he stopped counting at 50. Later on, it came out from the FBI. And again, with him being tight with the FBI, there's a lot of undisclosed knowledge, so to speak. They said 200. 200 is a good, is a more likely number for him. So he's got a license to kill because he's cooper cooperating? Well, they'll never admit that, but yes. They'll never admit that, but he could do braze. He did hits that, were, like that one I just said, it was brazen. We had no right doing that and on 86th Street with cops all around, you know, with kids and hangouts. It was like in the movies, you see the old days, kids would hang out in places, you know. Uh, he's the one that the family came to to kill a woman that they thought was going to uh, reveal where one of the uh, Persicos was hiding out. Whether she was or not, I still don't know, but they felt she was, Greg gets the hit. He didn't bring me on that one. And I remember him telling me, and I was happy. Woman, I mean, come on. Uh, he said, I know who has the stomach for this and who doesn't. And I was fine with that. And I wasn't the only one. A bunch of us didn't go on that one. It was a tight group that did that one. Yeah, that uh, takes you a different way. Yeah. We'll take well, I mean, that because, I, listen, if people are in that game, soldiers are killing soldiers, fair right. yeah, Gangsters are killing gangsters. It's a fair game for me. Right. But women... Children, no. that's, yeah, there's no going back from that. A after it was done, Scappy, our captain came in. And I'll never forget him saying, after it was done, we're all going to hell for this one. There's no justifying it, you know. But they knew who to go to, the Grim Reaper, and he got it done. So this guy, the Grim Reaper, who's killed over 200 people, you're having an affair with him. You think you're his brother, you would die for him, you would kill for him, and then you find out he's a snitch? Yep. What's that feeling? <sighs> I remember it. Being, it was, I was in prison. I'm in the can fighting my case, tooth and nail, spending all kinds of money on lawyers, trying to fight and win a case. What were you in for? Uh, racketeering, but murder, <clears throat> uh, loan shocking, conspiracy to do everything. When, my, when the indictment came in. Is this after the war? Yeah, when we were all arrested. Um, they arrested me in Florida, and it was a complaint. They arrest you on a complaint because they had to take time now to put the indictment. While I'm in, I talk to my family on the phone every day. I'm waiting for this indictment to come in and hear what it's about. So I asked my father one day. Did, uh, he said, the indictment came. We got, we got it. So I says, how is it? He says, well, they blame you for everything except Jimmy Hoffa. I mean, my father has a sense of humor, obviously, but uh, I got the point. So they, every hit, every shootout, every conspiracy, and uh, even ones that I wasn't on because I was part of the family and I was part of Greg's crew. So even ones that I really wasn't on, they put me in. And, and that's the MO. They'll just throw everything at you. So no, now later on, I'm, I'm back in MCC in New York. And it's funny because the feds have a funny way of doing things and it's all orchestrated and for a reason they had separations they would never let me be with Carmine Sessa they'd never let me be with some guys from the other side like Billy's crew because we were fighting each other to kill you know, you know even in the can they're afraid we'll kill each other but they bring me back from Otisville which is another prison and they put me on a floor with Vic Arena how do you do that 
that was our number one target. I'm the number one killer next to Greg in their indictment, not for real. I mean, you know, I, they overdo it. Uh, and that's when he came and apologized to me and said he was, you know, sorry. He did, he did say, I wish you guys were on my side, <laughs> but they said, I'm sorry it all happened. Why did they apologize though? Well, he's, 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 he, well, he's no, you know what? I didn't take it as a sign of weakness. I took it as a sign of humility. He knows he fucked up. If it wasn't for him, the family might not have fell apart. So everybody's dead and everybody's dead. Guys are in jail. Guys are making deals. Guys are running away. The family fell apart. Because but you're getting tired of it, with it all this time. That's why you accepted that. Well, well, the apology. Yeah. Well, at that point, like I said, to me, bygones were bygones. Let's try to win our cases. You know, our freedom's at stake now. I'm not worried about you right now. You know, you did what you did. Uh, but I, uh, so I accepted it and we talked. But within a couple of days, there's rumors swirling around that Greg Scarp is a rat. So him with two other heavyweights from the Lucchese family call me into the bathroom. That's where we go to talk because usually they supposedly could never be bugged or anything. They're not supposed to bug bathrooms and things like that. So we go in the bathroom. And they're asking me, he says, did you hear this? That Greg's a rat? I went after him. I fucking say something like that. Are you kidding me? And I'm ready to, I mean, he'd have no shot at me at that point. It's not that he's an, an old senile. He's only probably at the time, uh, nah, he's, I was 30. Yeah, he's probably in his early 50s. But still, I mean, he wasn't like a, an old. Anyway, I went after him. And I forgot respect for elders. I forgot who he, uh, I don't care. You can't call Greg a rat in front of me. So they get in between and they say, no, 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 just uh, we, we're hearing it. We, we're wondering if you knew anything. And after that, I, I moved my, my bed to the other side. I didn't want to stay near him anymore. The next day, Greg Scarp is in court, seeing you, the father, asking the judge for leniency. And his exact words were, I thought I could go home after all I did for this government over the years. Now, that's in the newspaper. The next day, they call me in the bathroom again. Same three guys. I go in, and they're telling me, how could you not have known? That's a bad signal. What are you going to try to make me a scapegoat? You're going to try to throw it onto me? As if you knew. I didn't know. Yeah, if I knew, I deserved to be killed. Yeah, most you know? percent, yeah. Right. So... I, I, no, I said, I, 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 and I was sick to my stomach, but again, go back to your question. I felt like my heart was ripped out of my chest. The guy I gave literally put my life on the line for, and he threw us under the bus. He threw his son, me, Jimmy. He was now making a deal, blaming the whole war on him and us to help Junior Persico's son. He's still trying one last ditch effort to maintain some kind of dignity in the life. But you were a rat for 30 years. Nothing you could do now is going to change that. Uh, but also I heard he was trying to make a deal where the family would give him some money so Linda would have money to live on. Uh, and part of, and because he could have easily said, we had nothing to do with it. You're dying anyway. Say Larry and Jimmy only drove me. They had no clue what I was doing. So I get a little slap on the wrist. I get five years, 10 years, something. Uh, I was willing for that. I understood that was the life and I'm going to do time. It's okay. But he threw us under the bus. So we're done. We're just, you know, and my, Jimmy was still on the lam. My partner never got arrested. He, we were getting ready to go. And uh, uh, he, we were going to go in different directions and meet up. Uh, but uh, I got arrested in Florida. What's and, the hardest part about finding out a guy who you would die for? You've seen people die. You've killed mm -hmm. people. You've destroyed your whole life. You've broke your mom's heart. What's the hardest thing about your best friend well, turning on you? Everything you just said <clears throat> is the hardest part. You just these thoughts go through your head that how 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 could it happen? First of all, how could he be bad? How could the government allow it? This is one of the most ruthless, murderous men in history. <laughs> and they allowed it. They partnered with him. They were giving us addresses. That's a, it's a, it's a lot of, it's surreal. I felt like I was walking on air. I felt like I was in a dream in another world. Couldn't believe it, it was true. Even when it was true, I couldn't believe it. You know, how the hell could, is this, it's, it's like the perfect storm. How could it happen? <laughs> 
you know. The coppers are pulling the strings and getting everybody to kill yep. each other, setting mm. everybody up. Yep. They know every bit of information. They know. This is just a game for them. And then, well, well it, they're all, all they're worried about is rising up on a pay scale. That's all they mm. care about. They don't care Promotion. about anything else. 